Hi, I put this short video together to show you a problem I've encountered with the last two of these Levoit air purifiers that I looked at. Both of them had the same failure in the power supply with a couple of capacitors that went bad. So I wanted to just document this for you. So to get access to the power supply, we're going to have to remove the front cover. You've got two screws on the sides and you can see I needed a long screwdriver to get access to those screws. So you've got two on the top on the sides that need to be removed and then you've got three along the bottom of the front cover uh, that need to be removed as well. So let's get those screws off of there. And then what we need to do next, uh, and there are still three screws that are holding that front panel on that we need to remove from the back side. So let's get these screws off in the front. We'll flip this thing over and you can flip that cover up and remove any of your air filters if you have them. And then there's three screws that have to be removed here. One of the screws was a unique screw head. It had a triangular shape, so I had to use a, one of the special bits to get that screw out. So with the three remaining screws removed on the back side, we've got it flipped over to the top now, and I used a putty knife to gently pry the edges up to uh, loosen the tabs on either edge of that front cover. And once all the tabs are up, you can see that the front cover has a lip along the front edge. And once you've got all the tabs up, you can gently pull that out. So now we can access the power supply that's encased in this plastic housing. We've got two screws to remove on either side to get it out of there. So let's go ahead and uh, remove the two screws. There's one on each, uh, each side that we'll have to uh, get out of there. And then we'll be able to slide this whole power supply upwards and out. So gently slide that whole housing out and you can access the power supply. You've got one screw that you're going to need to remove in order to take the top of cover off. And then there's a snap on either side uh, that's holding that in place and you can remove that. So now that you've got the power supply open, you can access the circuit board. There's a screw on either side that you'll need to remove. Uh, in order to lift the circuit board out of the housing. And so let's go ahead and do that. And of course, you know, you're doing all this with the power off. Make sure we don't have any problems with uh, any electricity. And sometimes these capacitors can hold some juice. So you might want to let those things set for a long time before you get in there and do this. Gently pull the wires aside because there's a little clip on either side that holds the uh, wires in place. And once you've got those wires back and out of the way, uh, you can lift the circuit board up and out. And you can see that, uh, I don't know if I show it to you here, yeah, we're zooming in here. You can see that there was a leak on one of those capacitors. You can see that brown stuff all over the place here. I'll point that out. And uh, I've since replaced both of those capacitors. So those are new capacitors, the small ones. Uh, they're actually 470 microfarad, 16 volt, and those have been replaced. Um, but you can see that the damage that was done from one of them that had leaked. You'll also note that I marked the board uh, with the plus sign because both of those uh, capacitors are polarized. So you want to make sure you orientate them correctly when you reinstall the new ones. And here's the bottom look at the circuit board. You're going to have to unsolder both of those, remove them, replace them, and you'll be back in business. So here's all the capacitors on the board. We've got the two old ones that were replaced. Uh, there's a package of 470 16 volts and then there's a package of 470 50 volts and you can see there's quite a size discrepancy. So I stayed with the 470 16 volts uh, just because they match the same size and they were the same uh, rating. Here I'm just uh, running one of the old capacitors to the checker and you can see getting a zero reading that was the one that was defective. And this one here, uh, I think, gives a satisfactory reading and could s probably still have functioned. But while I had the circuit board out and the power supply removed, I just went ahead and replaced both of them. 
So I've reassembled the units back together now and the power light indicator comes on and then we'll turn the switch on. It starts the fan turning. Uh, go through a couple of these buttons here. The display turns on and off. You got three speeds on the fan and the, and the uh, timer button as well. Um, so we're all back together and it's functioning properly and if you've got a similar problem maybe this is something that will help you. So take care. Thanks for watching. Have a good day.